I think um, the rise of the extreme right in Germany, but in all of Europe basically, is a challenge, a challenge we have to face and where we have to learn from international experiences. Um, and I think it's necessary, before I talk about the mass demonstrations we have seen in recent months, uh, that I give some background information about the AFD, the development, uh, and so on, to have some uh, idea. So the AFD, or Alternative für Deutschland, uh, as it's called, Alternative for Germany, uh, was founded in 2013, um, following the global economic crisis and also the um, Euro crisis, first initiated by a neoliberal economic uh, professor called Bernd Lucke um, as a Euro-skeptical uh, party. That was the first um, idea. And the party and its character changed and developed over the time. I will say more on this, but um, like it, it very quickly became a middle class party for sure, because um, also like the petit bourgeois and the middle classes were the ones suffering uh, from the economic crisis and fearing to um, uh, decline and uh, lose uh, economical um, possibilities, um, become part of the proletariat or um, uh, become unemployed and so on. Um, so many who were in that Eurosceptical um, uh, camp uh, joined the AFD. And this was a very important momentum um, for fascist forces also um, going into um, the AFD at a certain point. And this especially developed with a movement against uh, Syrian refugees um, coming uh, to Germany in 2014. And uh, um, this movement was called PEGIDA, um, Patriotische Europäer gegen die Islamisierung des Abendlandes, which means uh, patriotic um, Europeans against the Islamization of the Occident, basically. Um, and um, it protested against Syrians and other uh, people searching refuge in Germany. And there were certain limits and problems for building a mass movement uh, of fascists and a fascist mass party in Germany for obvious reasons. Because of the historical background uh, of uh, Nazism and um, the devastating um, results of it in Europe and also in Germany, itself um, with uh, Hitler and uh, Nazi fascism. Um, so in order to overcome that problem, fascists had to work in uh, secrecy a lot, had to develop new strategies on how to um, build mass influence. And the AFD, as a seemingly bourgeois party like any other, um, was, was a good uh, like breeding ground um, for these uh, cadres entering then. The organized uh, fascists within the AFD also consciously tried to keep their traditional anti-Semitism, for example, on low profile, so not to um, provoke um, these ideas. Um, for uh, There was one example like in 2016 when Gideon, uh, a member of the AFD, um, had certain um, writings where he um, used anti-Semitism. Uh, there was a long development of excluding him from the party, and he was excluded also in the end. So they kept the anti-Semitism, even though there, there is a lot of like organized uh, fascists within anti-Semitic tradition in the AFD, they kept it on low profile and rather uh, relied on anti-Muslim racism and sentiments to grow and to use it as a vehicle to gain mass support. Um, especially after Sarrazin's uh, book in Germany called uh, Deutschland schafft sich ab, uh, Germany is abolishing itself um, with racism mainly targeted uh, uh, against Muslims. There was a growing um, opportunity uh, for that, and that helped the AFD uh, to grow. And there were faces also, we call them in our organization, skinning processes. Um, skinning processes within the AFD. First, you had Bernd Lucke as leader um, who, who lost his leading position, left the party, tried to do an alternative project, failed. Then you had uh, Frau Kepetri, who tried to exclude the leader of um, the fascist core within the AFD, uh, Björn Höcke. I will talk more about him later. Um, and, and was 
uh, had to leave the party after it failed and tried a failed um, uh, alternative party as well. And then you also uh, more recently had Moyton who left um, the party again. So this more like right-wing conservative structures or neoliberal right-wing um, tended to leave the party and the fascist core gained more and more control. And the leadership now of, um, of um, uh, Schrupalla and um, yeah, maybe uh, you know some uh, Weidel, um, they, uh, they accepted this fascist um, uh, wing and also its growing control. So the fascist, organized fascist um, uh, wing within the party, AFD is also called Flügel, wing in Germany, just the wing. Uh, and it was uh, officially abolished and banned, but unofficially um, it still exists and is in, in a lot of control. So when, um, uh, when we look at um, some of their connections, they have best connections to uh, neo-Nazis in Germany, especially Höcke, and there's also um, observation how they visit his home and so on by anti-fascist uh, structures uh, and also to the organized like neo-Nazi terror structures in Germany where there have been a lot of attacks and also using dog whistles all the time um, to address these Nazi cadres in Germany. For example, he said in Thuringia, ah, next elections we want to have more than 30%, but he didn't say 30%, he said we want to have 33 plus X. And what he means by that, of course, is 1933 plus X. 1933, when the German Nazis came to power in Germany. So these are the kind of dog whistles um, he uses. He has read his Hitler and knows exactly what he's doing. Also talking about wolves coming among the sheep, using uh, metaphor, metaphors by um, uh, Himmler and many other uh, uh, leading Nazis, Goebbels and so on, uh, consciously to address, to show them, um, I'm one of you and my strategy um, yeah, is this. Um, so when in... 2017, the AFD entered the Bundestag, they were at 12.6%. Um, so a, a growl we have witnessed um, that is really um, dangerous since then. And the fascist wing is especially strong in East Germany, where there have been a lot of um, uh, yeah, in, in industrialization, uh, poverty, and so on. Um, and um, no, uh, the, the alternative from left is in decline. Um, especially we can see that in Thuringia, where uh, the AFD Nazi wing is um, strong and um, Höcke is the leading figure. And Bodo Ramelow, a member of Die Linke, so the left uh, party in Germany, um, is um, the, the uh, federal um, head and leading figure, um, also losing a left-wing alternative um, to the AFD even thinking about a coalition with the Christian Democratic Party in order to prevent Höcke. So it's very alarming uh, uh, signs we have seen there. Um, and I want to say something about the, um, also about the crisis uh, and resistance the, um, the AFD has faced before, because that says a lot about um, why the reaction now um, ha has grown as it is. Um, in, uh, uh, there was in Chemnitz in 2018, an incident where um, an Iraqi and a Syrian uh, came into a fight with a German and he died because of a stab wound. And that um, was the legitimization for a march of sadness by, organized by the AFD together with neo-Nazi cadres openly and the Pegida movement I talked about before. Um, and together, they, they had a huge um, uh, demonstration, also clashing with left wings. And after the demonstration, they went a step uh, forward in their plan of building um, paramilitias on the streets. They sent in the neo-Nazis, and they were hunting migrants in the city of Chemnitz. And that produced a huge backlash 
in German society. Many being shocked and understanding what they didn't understand before. While the media was inviting the AFD, saying they are just a right-wing populist party and so on, really uh, like underestimating it, then people began to understand a bit more that this is a Nazi party and what they actually want um, uh, is uh, what we have seen in history. Um, and this provoked a big scandal in uh, Germany and mass mobilizations across the country. That was the first one before this one. Also a concert, um, We Are More, it was called, Wir sind mehr, with uh, 65,000 uh, atten attendees, as far as I remember. Uh, also pushing back the percentage of the AS AFD to 10%. So the, the, the um, importance of mass mobilization and confronting them and showing their Nazi core um, uh, becomes very clear here in pushing them back and down. Um, there was a um, uni unity front campaign, Aufstehen gegen Rassismus, and it's still active. It was initiated um, by our organization back then and others. Uh, also, the Die Linke is part of it, SPD, the Green Party, and some trade unionists, even though, um, un unfortunately, they, like these bigger reformist um, uh, organizations don't really like do the active work, but there has been a lot of um, <laughs> Uh, there, there has been a lot of um, yeah, um, good um, mobilization and also workshops for arguing against right-wing uh, propaganda and arguments in uh, schools, at universities, also at workplaces and so on. StammtischkämpferInnen Ausbildung, it's called, like, um, don't know how to translate that actually, if any German wants to help me here, but yeah, to f fight them in argument, basically. Um, and there was also the campaign, Höcke is a Nazi, or Höcke is a fascist. And there were actually some court cases on this question, um, and the courts in the end had to say, well, yeah, he, he is a fascist, he is a Nazi, what can we say? He actually is one, um, so this is correct to name him as such, as the city tried to sue people for organizing a demo, Höcke is a fascist and so on, and Höcke is a Nazi. Um, <laughs> this was, yeah, um, but the AFD learned from that experience, from Chemnitz, that this mass mobilization with Nazis on the street might provoke a backlash that is counterproductive for the aims at this point. So the pace has to be slower at some points. Um, it's always like for them, for the Nazi core, a tactical question on how to relate to parliament and to elections and so on. Their power lies in building a parallel uh, state structure like the uh, SR and so on. Um, uh, and, and to have new fascist paramilitias crushing unions, uh, crushing worker mobilization organization and uh, left wing uh, and um, revolutionary organizations uh, uh, first most of the time. So um, the problem is after that the AFD managed um, to, um, to push into a vacuum that was also um, led there from the left when it came to the question of the corona pandemic and the Ukraine war, for example. Um, it, it had the opportunity because the Linke was just um, siding with the government each time and saying, yeah, okay, uh, we support that basically. And there, there was not much more. Um, uh, when it came to the Ukraine uh, question, they were a bit more hesitant and there were, but they supported the sanctions and so on. Um, but um, when it came to Corona, for example, even though there was a crazy zigzag, they didn't really like um, show that it was about profits for the government and uh, the capitalist dynamics um, and uh, not about human lives or protecting human lives as much. Um, so they didn't really go into confrontation there, um, but had an alliance because they, um, as a reformist party, aimed to have a coalition government with the Green Party and the SPD. Um, so, so that was a problem. And then on the other hand, you had Sarah Wagenknecht. I don't know if some of you know the name. She split from, by now from the party. And she had the other wrong, or even worse tactic maybe, um, to try to fish from the right and to, um, to take some ground by the AFD by also promoting its arguments against migration. Um, and, and, and that was the state of the like, mainly visible um, German left. Um, despite the AFD having a lot of ground to be attacked, 
because in its core, it's not a party for the working class or for the, um, for the poor. It's a neoliberal, hardcore neoliberal party when it comes to uh, the question of rents. It's the party of the rich when it comes to workers' rights. It, it's leading like the worst attacks on this. And it's also not a peace party, <laughs> very obviously. It also supports the growing militarization in Germany, supports um, the Israeli genocide in Gaza, uh, obviously even though when it comes to the question of Ukraine, it has a certain um, pro-Russian attitude because it has a voter base also in um, uh, uh, German-Russian migrants. And there have also been revealed connections to Russian and Chinese uh, secret service for some of the members uh, supporting them. For example, it's uh, EU candidate um, Kra. So um, the new crisis that led to these mass mobilizations we have witnessed in the uh, last couple of months was an, was an investigation by a corrective um, in, in, uh, investigative journalist um, who entered one of their meetings um, planning a mass deportation, not only against refugees, against any like migrants, also even with uh, German citizenship, and also possibly, of course, um, political opponents. Um, so that came to light, and it was a meeting by the AFD, some right-wing CDU members, uh, neo-Nazis and organized um, fascists, and also few of, like, there was one, I think, from the burger chain, Hans im Glück, so big capital, but not a lot. Like, um, the main um, line of big capital right now in Germany, because there's also not a strong workers' movement or um, revolutionary socialist mass party, is still, uh, we don't need the fascists and, and still aiming against that. There's even an alliance, economic alliance of big capital against the AFD. But like this shock in the German society that also meant, okay, my colleagues, my neighbors, and, and so many people would be deported by this Nazi party. Um, is, of course, like, is, um, was, the, um, was the reason and the cause for these mass mobilizations all around Germany. Like in Berlin, almost uh, half a million people went to the street, and in any city, basically, in every city in Germany, there were huge um, demonstrations um, against that. And um, this, this um, formulated some questions also within, of course, how to stop the Nazis? What strategy um, does work against them? Um, there, there was the question of the relation also towards the SPD and the Green Party. In the radical left, you have had some, of course, also re-evoking um, like the social fascism theory um, of, of Stalinism, basically, saying, we shouldn't um, walk with the social democrats because they are just like the uh, moderate wing of fascism, the government, for example, um, and, and they are just as bad because they keep up the system that um, enables the Nazis. Um, so a sectarian uh, ultra-leftist uh, view that um, uh, hinders mass mobilizations against the Nazis and the main enemy we have to fight at this um, point. So that was the first one. Then there was the idea also, okay, what if, if just we can let, it, um, uh, let the state do, do the work for us and ban um, the AFD? I want to um, name three reasons why I think a party ban against the AFD will not be the solution. And um, the first one is that the AFD, of course, with its, its voter base can seem anti-establishment again, can uh, play the victim card, and can um, um, mobilize new people on that basis. Um, and uh, also, it doesn't really dissolve their structures as such, especially like the organized neo-Nazis they already have, but it can even um, uh, support them in growing. Um, and second, uh, the legal measures of it would take um, years and this might be a demobilizing factor if people rely on this, where, where it's not even clear if it will be successful in the end. Um, so it might be demobilizing against the mass movement needed to combat the AFD um, with uncertain success. And the third one is that the state is not our ally also as leftists. History has shown again and again that we might be next and that these new state measures and setting new standards might also be aimed at the left that could fight, actually, the fascists and the Nazis. Um, 
So, um, yeah, th this was a huge discussion, especially because sometimes also government figures took part in the protests were speaking there. And this also led to a clash with another um, big movement being active in Germany, and that, that's the Palestine movement, obviously. Also trying to enter the demo, trying to say, how can you be this um, like um, contradictory where well, there's a genocide going on and our government backing a genocide. Um, uh, how, how can you say you are against deportation while if Israel is ethnically cleansing and deporting Palestinians on a daily basis? So that's, that was a huge conflict within the movement also because there was still a lot of racism also and even assaults against the Palestinians entering it. Go back home, no, you are not part of this um, and so on. Um, so, so there was a clash and it was not only a fight for the visibility of Palestine solidarity, but a fight against racism within the movement. Of course, we will say <laughs> at this point, um, we, we see that some people in a mass movement like this will have racist ideas and so on. And we shouldn't say, okay, now we, uh, we don't walk with them because there are too many racists in there. Of course, they have, like, um, uh, they have um, been socialized in, in the system and bring a lot of these ideas. But at the same time, when we go there, we also have to defend the right of Palestine solidarity and people to show their kofia or flags and so on. So this was a, um, a delicate issue within. Um, at the same time, also arguing within the Palestine movement against the social fascism theory, which was even more difficult, of course, because they made these uh, experiences with racist assaults, tell, um, uh, arguing, yeah, but still, if the fascists next to the state repression and so on um, grow and come to power, they can really smash our organizations also for Palestine um, with a street militant movement that is ideologically um, united that will come into our events, kill our leadership, deport our families, and so on. So we have to make a difference between um, uh, fascists and other uh, bourgeois races that are bad enough, but there is a difference, and we have to see that. Um, and we have, as Trotsky said, we, had to, um, we have to um, first um, confront the enemy that is aiming a gun at our head, um, and second, we also, at the same time, have to um, uh, uh, fight against the enemy that is um, mixing uh, poison in our coffee each day, which is like the, the capitalists and the reformists and so on. But, um, of course, if, if you are directly confronted with a deadly enemy, and the fascists are a deadly enemy, you have to confront them. And you have to do it with as many workers as you can get. Also calling to the leaders to join the protest, because otherwise um, the, the base might also not come. And we need this mass um, mobilizations against um, uh, fascism, while at the same time fighting for our freedom of uh, propaganda, of public um, uh, work. That, we, that they can't tell us to be quiet on Palestine solidarity, for example. We shouldn't accept this in the movement. And we should uh, also um, be able to show that our revolutionary outlook and perspective is one for ending fascism once and for all in a society free of oppression and exploitation that um, is a breeding ground for the fascists. Um, an end of capitalism because capitalism breeds fascism. That, that has to be clear that we have the chance. So after this mass mobilization, we have seen, and also a media campaign, as I said, like even a big capital was not at a point to support the fascists against the revolutionary socialist mo workers movement. Um, they, they, um, they came into a crisis again after their um, uh, 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 numbers growth and so on. And, infighting started. Höcke, for example, um, started to um, go to the elections with own posters against his own party members in parts of East Germany. Um, and also looking at uh, recent polls, they are of course still dangerously high, but they um, uh, decreased and went down. It was 13.3% uh, in West Germany and 24.8% in East Germany, really alarming still, and 16.3% um, in all of Germany. So that is high, but it is the lowest number since the beginning of the year, and they lost about um, 2.6 million voters. So you can see the effect of the 
um, mass mobilizations pushing, pushing them back. Um, and now with Essen, uh, they have their um, um, AFD party assembly, national party assembly in Essen in NRV, which is also, by the way, quite close um, to, to um, the Netherlands. I uh, invite all of you to join if you can. It's from the 28th until the 30th of June, um, where we want to confront the AFD Nazis and try to uh, hinder them to have their party assembly. And the mass mobilization also um, showed some effects because they had to end, the city had to end its um, uh, contract with the AFD Nazis for the building side. Um, they couldn't keep it up because they saw the mobilization pressure in all of Germany organizing buses. We hope to be tens of thousands again trying to block them and directly confront the Nazis. And this is my last point. I think when it comes to the united front and our, um, our approach as revolutionaries, we want to show in a united front that our tactics and strategies against fascism are working the uh, most effectively. And um, one of them is, of course, separating the hardcore Nazi cater from the more soft surrounding of them, especially in the AFD. Uh, we can see that. And this is by direct confrontation, showing what they are. Um, and also either provoking them to send their uh, neo-Nazi cadres to fight us or to back down and lose um, certain rooms they had in public. Because we have to exclude um, and push back the Nazis wherever they are. There can be no talks, no talk shows, no discussions where AFD Nazis are um, welcomed and we have to push them uh, back everywhere in the social sphere and also in the workplaces. We have to initiate campaigns in the workplaces against AFD um, um, members and so on, also in the unions, that they can't be um, a part of the unions when they are organized fascists. Um, and, and this is very important. And in, in Essen, we will go further to try to block them also from um, uh, 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 entering and um, to, um, to have, have it their way. Just. And we will show this proof in practice, but we also have to say our fight, our struggle against fascism is always connected to our wider strategy and perspective for social change. We are leading the class struggle, and not only in order to fight back the fascists, but also to end the system that is um, uh, providing them room to grow. And wherever they appear, we will be there, we will lead the fight politically. We are not um, using the same argument as Sarah Wagenknecht, for example. We are just use the social question and forget about, just ignore them. We need a political struggle against them, but at, a, at, a, at the same time, we need class struggle. And pushing them back is part of that. So yeah, I hope um, I explained it so that uh, even people who are not in Germany can understand well um, what was going on and how it developed. And I think the most important lessons to be learned is that mass mobilization and mass militancy against these fascist formations is important and showing who they are right from the start. Even if there are new developments, parties forming, there's only a core of fascists not publicly showing their ugly face behind the mask um, right away, we have to be there to confront them. Uh, they are Nazis, they are fascists, and um, uh, see right uh, through it. And um, when new formations in the Netherlands um, and in other European countries that are similar to this um, try to establish, um, we have to be ready right from the start and um, uh, combat uh, it. Yeah. Thank you.